another book called Identity, Your Passport to Success. And uh, it's kind of a culmination of the, the uh, other books I've written. Um, the question is, why is identity so important? Isn't that an interesting question? We don't really think about that question too much. Why is, it, is your identity so important? And so I think most people um, don't realize that identity is everything. Another question would be, what happens when you don't know who you are? When you don't know who you are, you can't co-create with the world. When you don't know who you are, you can't take information, education, make it relevant to your purpose in life. You can't transfer it back to your mind, and then you can't transfer it to the American free enterprise system or the global marketplace. When you have no identity, you really aren't free. Well, what's this freedom stuff he's talking about? My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land where our fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride from every mountainside. Let your freedom ring. How, how, do, how do you let your freedom ring? Well, you have to have a foundation for growth and development. You have to have a, an identity. You have to know who you are. And ladies and gentlemen, there are 6.5 billion people in the world who probably will never know, 99% will probably never know who they are. Will never be able to have an identity for themselves. Because they wake up in the morning, they wash their face, they brush their teeth, they get something to eat, they get the kids off to school, they work all day, they come home in the afternoon, they spend time with the family, they watch TV, go to bed, maybe they dream that's Monday. What do they do on Tuesday? This is interactive, okay? <laughs> Even though it's a city club, it's interactive, all right? What do they do on Tuesday? Same thing. What do they do on Wednesday? Same thing. What do they do on Thursday? Same thing. Friday, what do they do? Same thing. Saturday, what do they do? They sleep in, they wash, they clean up, they get the kids off to activities, they watch sports Saturday night, a lot of people go out to dinner, they go out, Sunday a lot of people go to church, church they eat chicken dinners in the afternoon, they get ready for what, ladies and gentlemen? Monday. Work on Monday. And how long can they do it for? 50 years. 50 years doing the same thing over and over every single day. So if you did the same thing you did yesterday, as you would do today, as you would do tomorrow, what have you done? Same, same thing, which is nothing. You got it. And you go to school and you say, okay, I, I, you know, school is a great thing. I'm, you know, education is wonderful. You go to school, the educational system teaches you how to memorize, take tests, repeat the information back. You get labeled with a grade. If I ask the student what they learned two weeks later, what would they say? Nothing. Nothing. So if you're doing the same thing over and over every single day, which is nothing, everything you learn you forget, which is nothing. Nothing from nothing is nothing. nothing. And so the question becomes, do you know who you are? And the world says, well, since you can't define yourself, I'm going to define you. And the world defines you by your house, and the world defines you by your car, and the world defines you by your race. Put you in a box and says, you can't make it because of the color of your skin. Socially constructed box to make you think what? That you are less than. Wrong. I grew up with a race-based consciousness. I thought it was about white America. I thought it was about government. So I turned my power over to somebody else to define my potential as a human being. And then the world puts you in another box. The world puts you in the women's box, the woman's box, and says, well, you can't, you don't know who you are, so I'm going to put you in the woman's box and and, and, and tell you and program you to believe that you can't make it because it's a man's world. Wrong. Millions of women get stuck in that box. And you get into the family box. I grew up with two disabled brothers in my family. Grew up with low self-esteem, lack of confidence in myself. So I was in that family box. 
And then they put you in a religious box, and then you're in the entitlement box. I think I'm better because I make a lot of money, or I'm, you know, I make more money than you. So you get into that box. You become part of that privileged thinking. And you get labeled in that box. And so you're labeled by the box, ladies and gentlemen. You're labeled by your house and your car and your clothes and your family and all the external things that make you think that's who you are. Wrong. And so it took me a long time to really understand that, uh, you know, you have to be able to transform your thinking to really understand who you are. And there's really no process for that. I know some of y'all probably define me by my relationship. I'm sure y'all said it. Don't say y'all didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, who are y'all listening to this afternoon? Well, I'm going to see Oprah's man this afternoon. You, you get... <laughs> I get stuck in that box. <laughs> so I get into a lot of boxes, ladies and gentlemen, so I understand the boxes. And I also understand this is not how other people define you. It's how you define yourself. And so the question is, do you have the tools to define yourself? Can you take your power back? What I do know is that everyone's equal because everybody has 24 hours. The question is what? What do you do with the 24 hours? And what do most people do with their 24 hours, ladies and gentlemen? George, you talked about, you know, folks watching TV for 70 hours a week. That's what they do with the 24 hours. Giving all their power away to somebody else to what define them. And so we grow up not being able to really think. The missing piece is we don't really think. We're not conscious. We're just kind of walking around surviving in a survival mindset, thinking we are really doing something because we have a nice car, we have a nice house, so we're comfortable, but we'll never be able to maximize our potential as a human being unless you know who you are, so you can build a foundation for continuous development, the 24 hours that you have every single day by taking the information and making it relevant to your life and taking control over your own destiny in spite of your background, in spite of your color, in spite of where you came from, in spite of your nationality. And that's real freedom when you can do that. And so it took me a long time to understand that, uh, well, how do, you, how do you do that? How do you own your own power? How do you move from a follower to a leader? How do you move from a slave to an owner? And I'm not talking about slavery in terms of race. I'm talking about slavery of the mind. How do you move from a consumer to a producer, where you can produce your own results, where you can have your own voice, where you can stand up for yourself and speak for your own person, for your own self? And there's a process for that. So I spent a number of years trying to create a process. I've written 11 books now, two New York Times bestsellers. And and what I talk about is the nine-step success process, which is a life management program which teaches you how to organize your life around your identity. And so identity is the first step in the nine-step success process. And that first step is based on the most powerful word in the world. You've got to have this word, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't have this word, what's going to happen? You just be average. And what's average like? Average is what? Average is just average. average. It's just average. You're not designed to be average. You're not supposed to be average. Not in America, you're not supposed to be average. And so the first step, if you get this step, if you get this first word, you can do anything. And the word is spelled L-O-V-E. Love. Mm. Most powerful word in the world. Some people will say God is love. love. And so when you can organize your whole life around love, when you can take the 24 hours that you have every single day, when you can take all the information and make it relevant to everything you love in your life, what happens? You begin to grow. 
you begin to be happy, you begin to smile. You begin to feel good about yourself. You begin to shape your own future on a piece of paper where you can organize everything you love and make it relevant to your whole life. We make your life more meaningful and purposeful because you have something you can focus on that you can actually think about that's tied to your what? Tied to your heart and soul and then you transfer it to your mind so you can think. And then you take education and make it relevant to everything you love in the 24 hours that you have so you can empower yourself as a human being. And so you're able now to define yourself as opposed to having the world define you by the external illusionary things that make you think that's who you are when your life really is made up of things in your heart and soul. See, that's the secret. Nobody wants to tell you the, the secret. See, they just want you be, to be defined by the labels on the outside to make you think you can't make it happen. You're not supposed to believe in yourself, and you don't have the power to shape your own future and create your own destiny based on accountability and self-leadership and leadership. See, this is about leadership. And so when you get that first step, when you start to feel good about yourself, when you become motivated, when you become energized, because you feel good about yourself, because you have a solid foundation for growth and development every single day. You're better today than you were yesterday. And you can develop a process of continuous improvement for the rest of your life. And all you do is excel.